Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo 992 and today we're back for another brand new video and that's right, ladies and gentlemen, if you check your old watch, it has been a bit of a time since me and they sat here and discussed some Rangers things and as we are still in the midst of the international break, there's no real Rangers things to break down and sink in it, no, I'm not talking about a badge on top of another badge, nah, I'm not that bored and I'm not that desperate just yet, in fact, I'm going to sit back and pull something that's relevant to the rest rest of our season as we've obviously had a recent injury in terms of Ridvan Yelmaz that everyone's freaking out about and rightly so he's a very good player but that there, that subject, that topic has my mind percolating ladies and gentlemen and after returning from Blackpool the little trip away Injuries and Rangers has all that's been on this grey noggin. It goes together, you know what I mean? It goes together like cereal and milk. Rangers, injuries. So I thought, let's me and thee go on a wee journey featuring that topic and just look at how badly our season has been ravaged by injuries and just how many players I've caught the injury bug. Now, the purpose of this video is certainly not to get the old violin out and be like, oh, look, feel sorry for us, we're being so unlucky with injuries. No, that at all. In fact, it's to look the other way and give praise to the likes of big Phil Claymont being able to navigate this madness. And I'm sure there'll be people from other clubs supporting elsewhere saying, I will, we've had this guy missing. That's cool, ladies and gentlemen. No disrespect, but I don't really care about that. I care about Rangers, and that's why today's video is actually here, as I want to just see how much good what Big Phil has actually done and how much headaches this football club has given him this season. So follow me Alice as we go down the rabbit hole and discuss Rangers and injuries and I think we'll do it per position then shall we and trust me as we go longer in today's video if you really stick it into the rest you will see just how badly this club has been affected and the injury pandemic if you will is truly embedded in this football club but let's start off with the goalie situation then shall we because that thankfully is a very happy one and it won't take us too long as touchwood nothing has happened to Jack Butlin nothing has actually happened to young Ro Robbie McCrory I almost said Ross once again but Robbie McCrory in terms of the back He's obviously been on the bench for the majority of the season and for the first time in his young career he has not missed a single game or been unavailable for selection. Obviously you've got John McLaughlin there but he's not in and amongst anything. He's the third place backup. So I, in terms of the goalkeeping position... We're actually all right. But that good feeling, that positivity slowly but surely starts to dissipate as we get to the old defenders troops. And I, it's going to get really painful as we've had a total of nine players play in the defensive areas this season, not including Dujon Sterling as we moved him into the midfield. If you watch the video to the end, that will make sense why we've actually done that. But pulling it in to the old defensive areas, we have had nine players in total playing in the defensive areas so far this season with seven of the nine picking up injuries so far. Young Leon King obviously started the season off with a major injury and it's sort of been following him so far this season as he's missed a total of 20 games when being available for call -up. Another Leon is next up as we have Leon Balogun now which is a really sore point as he had to wait a long time to get in to the starting 11 to be given an opportunity then he took it and he went away rambling and again I think if you look at it he's one of our best or most consistent defenders when he actually plays and I think he's had major moments but unfortunately a facial injury would have broke something in the the old noggin and everything like that made a miss some time and so far as I'm currently recording today's video he has now missed seven games in terms of an injury he has came back from that injury and been a part of the bench so we don't include that in the missed games but in total he missed seven games through the facial injury when he was really at the old peak of his power so far this season next up a player that he sometimes rotates in and out for that is none other than the forgotten man Ben Davies again if it wasn't for a couple cryptic social media a post and the occasional background picture having a shot saying Ben Davis I'd have that man's face on a milk carton. As a man that we apparently paid near three million pounds for has continued to fade in and around in the background as so far this season he has missed a total of 19 games through injury. Again we're not talking about bench, we're not talking about this, I'm talking about injuries, that's all we're talking about right here with the list. When you hear the games you hear this, he's obviously not played on a lot more than that but in terms of the listed injuries he has missed 19 games through injuries this season. 
He's barely played. The exact same cannot be said for the next two players, thankfully, that we're actually going to talk about. We'll talk about CB number one, as he always is, no matter what manager comes in or who. The first name on the team sheet every week defensively is Connor Goldson, and I feel like they know probably a little bit more than we do, and there's probably a reason for that, being the vice captain of this football club since he stepped in, and again, being continually first choice defensively every single week and under every single manager and so far this season Connor goes to miss three games in total due to injuries and that was obviously a difficult period as it was a little bit messy in the background but just three is not bad and hopefully that remains to be seen for the rest of the season now the partner that he's beside a lot of the time is none other than big John Souter who obviously just had a really tough time when he got subbed on for Scotland and I think it probably shows you the appreciation that maybe Golton doesn't get for babysitting Tav's right hand side and babysitting Tav S John Souter's like left hand side if we're being brutal honest but John Souter, big soapy who has had his moments this season has missed just four games through injury which is great to see for him again all jokes and a bit of fun and all that to side you want to see the lad they grab it get on the park and play well for the majority of the season he's certainly done that as big John Souter and Connor Goldson has missed just seven games between them which again is vitally important if you're paying attention to the injury list so far but we did mention the left hand side and that's what takes us into the next part of today video then shall we as we talk about Ridvan Yelmaz who before his latest injury missed six games in total throughout the actual season before obviously that drop that total was going to jump up over the next couple of weeks as he picked up an injury 27 minutes into a game for his countries can we stop this pointless international friendly nonsense I know everyone's released their shirt and some people are happy some people aren't they but you want to fling them out there and you want the games on the telly so people see the new shirts and buy it it's a money monopoly after all but I'm sick to death of losing good vital players during big parts of the season potential cup finals coming up league title fight all the way to the end for what a pointless friendly that's only put out there so guys can sell the merchandise that's new coming out ahead of the next major tournament. I'm sick to death of it, ladies and gentlemen, but I, I I'm not here to voice my frustration. We've got a very long video on a hand, but yeah, Ridvan had missed six games in total before his latest injury, but that should jump up, meaning it opens the door for the next guy, Barisic, who in my current time of recording has missed a total of eight games in all competitions. That is seven over nine. The only two defenders that we've had playing in defensive areas this season to not pick up an injury is young Yefko, who has played one game for us. Very, very impressive. We call him Mr. Echo right here, lovingly, on the channel. And James Henry Tavernier, who not only, surprisingly, when you look at the actual list, has played the most at everyone, but he plays the most every single season. And that's a testament to that man, whether you like him or no, the way he looks after himself and trains and recovers and is so damn impressive. As something we've said many times on this channel, the best ability is availability. And the skipper leads massively in that category. And I, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. You take Yefko's one performance for Rangers this season off the table, the only defender to play meaningful amounts of games for this football club to not pick up a knock is one. And it's tough. But if you thought those numbers were bad and really eye-opening, it's time to move on to the midfield as we're going to be spending a lot of time actually talking as we've got a 17 players that's played in the midfield for Rangers so far this season, including the middle of the park and obviously the wing position as that's still considered midfielders, certainly in my generation. And we're going to look at that. 17 players. Spoiler alert for the next couple of minutes. 15 of them. 15 of them have picked up injuries this season. That there is mental, ladies and gentlemen. But we're going to pull it back to a man that we just mentioned by the name of Dujon Sterling. The reason we didn't put him in the defence is because he's played the majority of his time so far this season in a Ranger shirt playing in the middle of the park. And as much as we love the big guy and he has plugged so many different areas, most Rangers things of all time is the guy that can cover in any position to protect and cover for injuries is picking up injuries pretty consecutively. Now, thankfully for us, Dujon Stellan has missed just nine games in total through injury. Obviously, he missed a large part of this early season because Michael Beale simply wasn't selecting him. But in terms of when he was fit and available and everything like that, he went on that great run, really put himself in there, and then he's picked up a total of three different knocks so far this season. But thankfully, it's been little knocks, little niggles, and hopefully that remains to be seen as he's already expected to be back in and amongst it for Hibs, and hopefully that continues to keep on this season. But in terms of numbers, how many games has Dujon Sterling missed in total? 
nine. We're about to jump up pretty massively from Dujon Sterling as we move on to young Raskin as well. Someone with a lot of hype and a lot of re re expectations on him, especially the way the, the last season ended, what it was expected, how bright he looked, and even the friendly versus Newcastle. He's one of the bright sparks in a very poor pre-season, but obviously was hit badly by the injury bug as he missed 19 games in total, which is obviously deficit and really hard to bounce back for that amount of games, especially consecutively, because it wasn't a niggle here, niggle here, knock here, knock here, we can keep your level up or we can keep your consistency up. No, it was 19 games straight. And in most cases, 19 games would probably be the maximum, you know what I mean? The worst case scenario, but it doesn't even crack your top three, ladies and gentlemen, as we're about to beat it in the next couple of minutes. In fact, we're going to beat it right now as we go on to talk about Ryan Jack, who again is one of these players that misses games here, there, and unfortunately everywhere. What a player when he's able to play and what a team we look like when he's in starting 11, but it's just getting him there. Again, he's not really bounced back from the injury he picked up again on a pointless international duty. I'm sick of international football. Sorry if you love it. Sorry if you didn't. I just didn't. Maybe I'm getting too old or anything flat, but I see these pointless international breaks constantly and all I'm seeing is players coming back injured, coming back injured, coming back injured. And for what? ladies and gentlemen. Jacko missed a couple months thanks to um, 11 minutes playing for Scotland. Red Van's going to be missing a couple of weeks for 27 minutes for Turkey. What's the purpose of all these games? Can someone really let me know in the comment section below? Because to me, I just didn't get it. Major tournaments, I get. Maybe a wee tune-up here or there, I get. But the amount of games that's coming in these days is simply embarrassing. It's just giving caps for caps sake in this then and obviously selling the new merchandise and the new kits that they want today. But in terms of Jack, he has missed a total of 24 games as my current time. Of record. A number he shares with another very talented player who makes our side completely different, just like Jacko, makes us better when he's in the starting 11, and that is by the name of Mr. Tom Lawrence, who's already had some major moments since coming back in it. Looks a great player. Again, what a side we look like in total. But in terms of his numbers, what he has missed so far, just this season, not last season, this season for Rangers, he has missed a total of 24 games as well. Now when speaking about the next guy who again is a wee bit polarising in terms of the Rangers support, some people really like him, some people didn't, some people enjoy the purple patches, some people get infuriated by the others and I understand every angle and every view on the player but I am very delighted that he's no sitting here with 24 games missed because I don't know where this team would be afoot the man who's been sort of given the keys since Phil Clements came in to this football club and that is none other than John Lundstrom who mercifully has missed just four games this season through injuries and I that's been massive. And just like Jacko and Lawrence, we have another guy that shares the number of terms of games missed with John Lundstrom, and that is young Ross McCausland, who again has done hell of a well, in my opinion, stepping up. He wasn't the, the heir apparent, he wasn't the pick from the youth team, he was the backup of the backup in terms of the youth squad, and I think he's done great stepping into a role he clearly wasn't selected or cherry-picked yet for, but sometimes life throws you some curveballs, curveballs sorry, and you've got to stand up there and really swing away, and that's what the young laddies did learning and getting better with every single game but just like John Lundstrom young Ross has missed four games through injuries and if we want to start deeper with in terms of the injuries that's just games he's missed completely you can bring in three other games that he's been substituted off through injuries but again in terms of injuries and games missed the number sits at four. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, yes, that's right, we are still going right now, but someone who has got a lot of creativity and a massive part of the team, especially dragging us in certain games when he was on form, when he was getting picked every week, getting played in his best position, scoring, 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 six goals in eight games, blah, blah, blah. It was none other than Todd Cantwell, who had his early start of the season, affected by injuries, came back early, played through some injuries for us, form sort of dissipated because of that, bounced back, got in a great run, and then just when he was starting at his peak of his power, really pulling the strings in the Rangers team, scoring and assisting, he gets injured again. Now, thankfully, he's obviously made his return in his most recent Rangers game, but in total, so far this season, Todd Cantwell, we have been robbed of the Cantwell ability 14 times this season. Now, the next two guys are probably going to be covered a lot quicker right here on the channel because you have Jose Sevuentes, who is still technically a Rangers player as he is out on loan, and he was only here for six months, but that didn't stop him picking up the Rangers injury bug, especially when it comes to the engine room, as Jose missed 10 games in total. No through suspension, that's no added on. No, just through injuries. 10 games, people. He was here 
six months. But where my frustrations lie elsewhere when it looks at the likes of Jose Cervantes, because he's got other ability, he's got the talent, he just didn't want to up here or in here, and he wanted to play in a nice, pretty country with great weather. He can go, ladies and gentlemen, right? Where my other side of that, and where I get my, honestly, gut feeling, where I just feel sad about the player, it's none other than young Zach Lovelace, who again was selected, who was vital. He got put in a team that was playing stinking under Bale, started fantastically versus St Mirren, created the first goal, a goal that was badly needed when we played St Mirren at that point of that season, go back to it, bright spark, selected, worked so hard, goes down injured, now obviously that opened the door for young Ross McCausland to then come in and have what he done, but I can't help but feel gutted for young Zach Lovelace who spent a long time out injured, then made his comeback a couple of weeks ago and unfortunately had a setback, but I, in terms of where I stand right now, young Zach Lovelace who has made an appearance for Rangers so far this season and technically got an assist as he won the penalty, has missed a total of 29 games through injury this season. Now you might be sitting there thinking to yourself, well that's got to be the worst one, that's got to be the Mace games. 29 games in a single season, that is ridiculous, but this is Rangers Football Club ladies and gentlemen, meaning we now need to go and speak about someone who's missed 38 games at my current time, a recording in a couple of days time ladies and gentlemen, it'll be 39 games and that is none other than Kieran Dowell. You talk about Ben Davies being the forgotten man. What about Kieran Dowell? Kieran Dowell's came into the team and looked really good and looked really solid, been really impressive, but he just kind of get on the actual park. 38 games he has missed so far in total with numerous different injuries. He's had two surgeries. He's had nearly as many surgeries as he's had goals for this club, ladies and gentlemen. That is terrifying. And again, talent. We need that type of talent. We need that type of ability on the park, but... We're just not getting it, and that's infuriating. 38 games missed. Soon to be 39. Now, I'm really, really sorry if you're starting to get bored right now and you're starting to feel like, wow, this video's gone on forever. But again, this is what we're talking about. You keep talking about injuries in the comment section. You keep asking me about injuries. This is the injuries right here, and we're not nearly done anytime soon. We're still just talking about the midfield right now. We move to the winger position now, but it's still in the midfield department, if you will, and next we talk about Scotty, Scotty, right, Mr. Hamden, a guy who again got chucked to Turkey several times, but just kept coming freaking back. Not including those games that Beal literally sent him on flights to Turkey, we're just looking at the amount of games that he missed, and in total, Scotty Wright has missed 17 games so far this season, and I've seen some arguments saying it's good to keep Scotty Wright around, it's good to keep him, because he's always available. No. No, he's no, ladies and gentlemen. If you actually look at it, he's injured a hell of a lot of time. And maybe that's what's caused a lot of the inconsistencies in his game. Is he just can't get on the actual part consistent, consistently enough? Because every time he gets a run of games, he gets injured. Started scoring, started looking bright, injured. Now he's just here, injured, here, injured, here, injured. That's unfortunately the way it's been going for a wee while. But he's not the only winger that's been picking up injuries left, right and centre. Nana, nah, nah, we have Rabi Matundo who's actually missed three more games than Scotty Wright. You know what I mean? He came in here to probably replace the likes of Ryan Kent, the Scotty Wrights and everything of this team. Now he's lining up there with 20 games in total missed so far with, again, three different injuries so far just this season. Next up we have another young player with a lot of potential and it certainly is potential on the park if he can get anywhere near it and again he didn't start this season with Rangers, in fact he was loaned out to Hearts but now he is back at Rangers and again he's been missing games through injuries, through injuries with a back injury that is none other than young Alex Lowry. Guy with the potential guy's got the talent, can he get on the park to prove it, can he work his arse off to prove it that remains to be seen. Hopefully it's back sometime from injury because when you start looking at injuries we've got, we could use the bright spark, the creativity of an Alex Lowry now and again. But even the young laddie kind of get near the park as his body is betraying him. It's unfortunately a calling sign for a Rangers player. Mercifully, we have just two names left on the old list to speak about, ladies and gentlemen, in terms of the midfield department, and that is Oscar Cortes, who has so far missed four games, and again, he's expected to not play again. You might never see him in a Rangers shirt again, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully, we can make it permanent, as he did sit and look. A player, but he had played less than ten times. He's missed now four games, and that will obviously swing the other way, where he's missed more games to injuries than they actually played when it's all said and done at the end of the season. Remains to be seen if we activate that loan clause that's in his contract, but a great player on his day, but 
Unfortunately, he's been picking up. He's picked up a serious injury, and we won't see him again this season. And that takes me to the next guy, another guy that's in a similar position in terms of a loan, Mister Sima. Now, thankfully, and hopefully, he's back very, very soon. Can I just be cheeky and offer and pr praise and pray for the potential game versus Hibs? That would be great if we could see the big man. But aye, it might be just a little bit too early, as the man has missed a total of fourteen games coming into the end of this international break where again he's picked up an injury on international duty and he didn't even play ladies and gentlemen he didn't even get on the actual part you're talking about Jacko you're talking about Ridvan you're talking about Sima pointless international friendlies and gone away in fact I think Sima was actually away to the African Cup of Nations right enough but he got injured in training and that's just where the frustration actually lies it's out with the fact we're already cursed we didn't need the players leaving and getting injured elsewhere and aye it's a sad one and ladies and gentlemen but a guy who had so much promise and was scoring so many big goals despite frustrating a lot of people has missed 14 games in total and aye that's your 15 injured midfielder so far this season. Now there is 17 midfielders that's actually played this season as you have Dion Mandy who's actually left the park in one of the games looking to carry an injury but again he hasn't missed a game officially to injury so hopefully everything's alright with Dion Mandy. I imagine he actually is fine and of course last but not least you have young Cole McKinnon who's just sort of came into the scene and been given an opportunity over the last couple of weeks because of the amounts of injuries. We have just looked at 17 midfielders that's played more than one game for Rangers so far this season. 15 in total. 15 different players out of the 17 that's been selected has picked up and missed games through injuries. Like... What is going on? Now, mercifully, not only to all our sanities, but the fact that I'm running out of space with the current editing that I'm needing to actually do right here, ladies and gentlemen, and we move from the midfield to the attack. Now, the attack is much more limited, thankfully, and a lot less injuries even more, thankfully, ladies and gentlemen, as we have had a total of five attackers that's played in the number nine role so far this season. Only two have picked up injuries, meaning we have three. The first time this season when we're looking at position in terms of not injured to injured ratio, we finally get a win, ladies and gentlemen. But as the deciding factor is Sam Lammers, it kind of feels a little bit like cheating and a bit of an empty start. In that aspect, there's Sam Lammers, Fabio Silver and Dessers, all attackers that's played the number nine so far this season for Rangers, haven't picked up an injury this season. Hopefully that remains the same for Dessers and Silva because honestly, where would be a foot either one of them? Especially as much crap as Dessers actually gets, his availability has been massive because the other two in the terms of the attacking position certainly haven't been blessed with foot. The injury bug and the other striker that was here before Silva was Lammer, so I. Dessers had a lot to carry on those shoulders. But the first one we're going to talk up in terms of the injuries is none other than the Brazilian himself, Mr. Danilo, who again has missed a lot of time due to two separate injuries. It was a weird spell of the season where he wasn't getting an opportunity by Michael Bill. Then he came in, scored a big brave heater, broke his face, missed a long period of that, came back, started scoring goals, started missing some chances. You thought, oh, he is a Ranger striker. And then he gets some long-term injury and I we probably won't see him again to the end of the season. My current time of recording, which again will jump up over the next couple of weeks, he has missed a total of 27 games for Rangers. A major expenditure done in the summer has missed 27 games in total. And aye, that number's going to go up and up and up. Is truly, I know it's not what he's want to hear or what people were saying online, but I don't think we'll see Danilo again this season in terms of meaningful minutes. Maybe a minute or two in the last game or in for the last home game, if he can get there, but aye. He's still miles away, in my opinion. And the other guy is Kamar Roof. And aye, Kamar Roof's had more returns than Michael Myers at this point. You know what I mean? He just keeps coming back and coming back and coming back. And that's unfortunately been the tail of the tape for Roof. When he's given an opportunity, when he's able to go in the park, his goal to, go, goal to game ratio is sensational. But it's just actually getting there. And so far this season, Kamar Roof has missed 23 games in all competitions in terms say injuries. Slap that together, ladies and gentlemen. That's two major strikers, two major players that can put the ball in the back of net, two major players on a lot. And Money has missed 50 games between them. And that there 
is scary. But that's it in terms of the attack. Again, the only part of the, the actual park in terms of outfielders where we've had more injured, less players than injured. And aye, that's a damning stat, especially since one of them is on loan to Holland right now, ladies and gentlemen. But if you take a step back and you look at what you're looking at at the screen, that is a lot, and I mean a lot, of injured players. And we're not calling them out. When we're not, this video isn't to target them and start getting, oh, look, the, the, the. it's not any of that. It's just to show how unlucky we've been so far this season. Is look at the talent that's on your screen. Look at your ability that we've been robbed of, this manager's been robbed of, to really build on special in terms of eh, this team. Can you understand why there's so many ups and downs when you're losing that calibre a eh, player? That's why I wanted to make today's video, just to really put it out there, just to show, because everyone keeps talking about injuries, keep talking about Rangers, well there you have it now on your screen, as of today, the 26th of the 3rd, 2024, that's where we sit as a team. You take a step back and you look at everyone, we've had a total of 32 outfield players play for us this season, of the 32 that's played, 25 of them have picked up injuries. 25 different players of 32 get in injured. And again, when you start breaking in to those numbers, the seven that remained injury-free, Yefko's played one. Cole McKinnon's just came in and played a couple. Diamandi's just in the door and he's had to be substituted off in one of the games. You're really looking at the likes of Taverniers, Dessers, and up to the point that you've got Lone Dute, Lammers who had really put in mileage and really started clocking up in terms of appearance but Lammers is gone now, you've really got Tav and Dessers being consistently available to be selected on the park out the entire squad, ladies and gentlemen, if you just look at the numbers, because again, Fabio Silva's just in the door, just like a Diamanda, you're looking at the entire season, only two have been available for every single game, that is outrageous, and I don't think, again, there's many teams out there as unlucky with us in terms of injuries, but there's the numbers, there's the stats, there's the players, I'd love to know what your thoughts and opinions are regarding this, I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions down there in the old comment section below, and if you enjoyed this video and you enjoyed this topic and you want to see more types of these videos really narrowing in on a subject, let me know down in the comment section, we'll cover it right here on the channel, but until next time, I've been CJ Nominee 2, thank you so much for watching, all the best, and bye bye